pedra é o fim do caminho É o resto de toco, é um pouco sozinho É um caco de vidro, é a vida, é o sol É a noite, é a morte, right, last project. é o anzol uh, Save so Survived, Project 2, and our previous projects And uh, now, here, our last one um, so in this project, you will be building a graph class. So we will, your main task is going to be to build a package, or sorry, not a graph class, but a graph package that provides the ability to represent directed, undirected graphs, and, and so forth. Um, and then you'll write a couple of clients, one that's a rudimentary uh, make implementation, uh, and then a trip finder that tries to find the shortest directions from one place to another using your graph package. Um, so I think a natural place to start, and this wasn't obvious to me, by the way. Part of my delay in the video is I changed my mind about this, but uh, a pretty natural way to start is the graph package. So let's pop this puppy open. Um, hmm, that sounds like a bad situation for a puppy, but since this puppy is just code, I think it'll be fine. Uh, so the graph package uh, should look something like this. So this is the skeleton we provide you. Um, and we, uh, the classes you'll be filling in are all of these ones in blue. And as before, uh, we have here uh, a number of lines of code that is going to be uh, an estimate of what you might need, right? Um, though I'll mention that the core of the graph class, is the, the amount of lines of code you write will vary considerably depending on how you decide to implement things. So let's see a little bit of what this package is supposed to do by example to work, all right? Um, so there's basically two types of graphs. Here they are. Uh, and both of them have a lot in common. Those things they have in common are captured in graph object. Uh, so for example, graph object has uh, vertex size, the number of vertices that are in the graph, right? And I'll mention that the graph object class, which provides these common implementations, uh, it does not have the comments, so you always need to go to the graph class, all right, uh, to understand what things are supposed to do. Okay, so the code we're gonna do, we're gonna um, give some examples in terms of directed graphs, and let's just jump right into it. So when you kick off your program, you can say, for example, directed graph G equals new directed graph, uh, and then query the graph for its vertex size and its max vertex. So how does that work? Well, since a directed graph is just a graph object, uh, and it does not override the vertex size or max vertex methods, it will get its answer from graph object. At the moment, it just returns zero. Hey, actually, it's correct right now. But the desired behavior is indeed that when you create a new graph, it should have zero vertices, and the largest vertex number is zero. Uh, we can also do things like add, right? So the, one of the main primitives for our graph operation that we'll want is the ability to create new vertices. And when we do so, a new vertex appears, voila. Uh, and here it is, happily waiting whatever task you have for it. Now, one of the big challenges of this assignment is going to be picking an appropriate data structure to support all of the operations that will eventually fill up the left side of uh, your screen. So add uh, could be any number of things. I mean, you could be creating an array list of just vertex numbers. That would do this for you. Um, you could create your own array thing, a linked list, a set, or whatever. It's up to you. You get to pick. And your choice is going to want to take into account all these different things we're about to do. So we can add a vertex. Uh, and after we've added one, we want the data structures you've selected to be able to implement these operations. How many vertices are there? One. What's the biggest vertex number? One. Uh, how many edges are there leaving node one? And you know, you'd have to go and read the documentation and graph, but we see here, number of outgoing edges incident to V. Uh, so number of edges coming out of one, there are none. Okay, um, we can add more vertices and even more vertices. And there you go. Uh, and then we can actually also add edges. This is the other big thing you're gonna need to be able to add. So we do say one, three, and an edge appears. And again, you're representing it however you want, your choice. Uh, from three to two, from two to one, and there you go. So now we have a little cycle here, and that's fine. Um, and now we can ask questions like how many vertices are, or what's the biggest numbered vertex? It is three. What's the successor of three, all right? Now we'll notice that, of course, a, a node can have, or a vertex can have multiple node edges coming out of it. So uh, if we look at the successor of three, um, we, we have to actually provide a number that says which vertex, or which successor number we're interested in. So I'm saying, give me the zeroth successor of three. Well, the zeroth successor of three is just two. Uh, the zeroth success, a predecessor of three, um, somehow three needs to be able, or rather, your entire graph, uh, directed graph class has to be able to know 
that somehow 3's predecessor uh, is 1. Now you could do that by storing it along with whatever data structure is in 3 or some other more exotic thing. Your choice. I'm not really going to say your choice a lot of times, so I don't know. Get your soundboard ready, I guess. Um, so here is now a predecessor, uh, another predecessor call, where we're asking for not the zeroth or the oneth, but the tooth uh, predecessor of 3. Well, 3 only has this zeroth predecessor, so we return 0 to say there is no such uh, predecessor. Okay. Um, we can add more edges, so it's OK if we have a loop that's this long. That's fine. So 2, 3 will do that. Um, and now our successor method, we can start actually taking advantage of this other parameter. We can say, I don't want the zeroth successor of 1, but in fact the oneth successor, which of course is just going to be 3. Okay. Uh, I can add another vertex, which we'll be using in a little bit. Uh, and as an aside, I'll mention that if I try and add an edge which already exists, this should have no effect. All right, so no, nothing's allowed to happen here. Uh, we have removal operations. Uh, and again, this is something you're going to want to take into account when you're building your, or making your data structure selection. Uh, so when we remove 2, 1, uh, what that's saying is take the edge which goes from vertex 2 to 1 and remove it. Okay? So it is not saying remove the oneth successor of 2. It's saying remove the edge between 2 and 1. So that will go away, and we end up with this. If we now go through and ask for the zeroth successor of 2, uh, well, before it would have been this edge, because we added that one first. Or, but because that edge is gone, now the zeroth successor of 2 is 3. Right? Uh, we could also remove entire vertices. And in that case, what happens is we remove all the edges, uh, and then we remove this vertex, and we end up with this graph right here. So 2 is completely gone. We do not renumber our vertices. So there's a hole in the set of vertices, 1, 3, and 4. Okay, so that's after we've removed everything. Uh, we could ask the question, does our graph contain 2? And it should give us false. Um, we could also ask, what is the max numbered vertex? And we get 4. Uh, how many vertices do we have? I should only get 3. OK. Uh, we could also, there's also these iterable type methods. So uh, if we look at vertices, uh, it's an iteration. Well, what's an iteration? An iteration is an iterator and an iterable. OK, so that's interesting. So that means it returns an iterator method, uh, but it also has. So uh, when we say it's an iterator, it implements iterator, that means it has this method. And when we say it's iterable, that means it has uh, the uh, it has a next and a has next method. I'll come back to some syntax issues uh, for this class in a little bit. Uh, but the semantics of this thing are because we have this vertices uh, method that returns an iteration of integers, we're able to uh, print out, let's say, each of the uh, vert vertex numbers in turn. One, three, four, right? OK, we can also add edges from, say, one to four, just to have another one there for now. Uh, and then if I were to add another vertex, uh, it is going to create a vertex two. Uh, and if we look carefully at the definition of add, we see that it's supposed to return. Oh, oops, in graph, it's an uh, in graph. Uh, here it is. So it needs to uh, return the vertex number. Okay. So when it says int, it's supposed to return the vertex number two. Okay. And at this point, if we were to go through and iterate through, we'd get one, two, three, four. So this fills in the gap. Uh, and then I guess our very last little bit will be uh, we could ask for the predecessor of two. Uh, and an important point, and something you definitely want to include in your unit tests, is to make sure that 2 does not have ancestral memories of the 2 that came before it, right? The old 2 is dust. This is a new 2. He has no memory of the old edges that 2 was involved in. Um, and, oh, I had another one. I forgot I added this. Um, I can also, for example, say I want to add an edge from 1 to 15. Uh, and if we look carefully at the comment, we see that it says it assumes that u and v are my vertices. So if that assumption is false, that means it could do anything you want. It can throw an exception if you want. Uh, it can um, it can add edges, any arbitrary edge, anything. It doesn't matter, right? If someone does this, they're just using your class wrong. Okay. So what that means is, if I were to uh, to iterate through all of uh, the successors of vertex one, well, I should certainly see three and four, um, but I might also see fifteen because this right here is not defined. Okay. 
Uh, so that's the basic semantics of what your graph classes are supposed to do. I didn't cover everything, but that's the, uh, I think, the things that have seemed tricky on Piazza and in person. So some general tips about picking your data structures that go in your graph obj class. Um, so what I would recommend is that you should pick data structures that make your life easy. All right? Uh, that is, don't worry about what is the absolute most efficient way to do things. Okay, um, I will say that I what I think is the optimal data structure for doing everything in terms of simplicity uh, and speed trade-off, there is not quite that thing built into Java. Um, I won't tell you what it is, and we haven't really said it in class, but um, yeah, my, my rough approximation of what would be best is just not even part of Java. Um, so what I would do is um, you know, experiment a little, see what seems to stick. And uh, probably my biggest recommendation is remember that lists, maps, and sets have all these fancy methods. So if we look at, I don't know, let's look at uh, array lists, for example, um, or list. If we look at lists, we see that they can, uh, they have like, you know, contains methods and uh, the ability to remove things by index or by object. I mean, remember that those things exist and it'll save you trouble. They might not be as especially fast as other data structures, but again, Focus on, in this case, minimizing the cost uh, to program it, right? Make it as crisp as possible and make it as debuggable as possible. And, and you know, try and enjoy yourself, right? Don't, don't, don't go nuts trying to make something super efficient if it's going to eat your life, right? That's why people who write library code, uh, that's, that's their job. OK. Um, so of course, please modularize. Break things down into little pieces, whatever seems the best. Uh, and as far as choices go, there are better choices than others, but I don't want you guys to just say, you know, on Piazza, what should I use to implement everything, right? Like, don't take someone's suggestion. Don't accept what somebody else does, because I think part of the learning experience here is to think about that, to say, what if we use like a hash map of like hash sets, and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, that's an interesting question to try and think about things like that. But if you do find that whatever you're trying to write is ugly, uh, don't be afraid to to mess uh, to to scrap things uh, what you've started with if things get really ugly. So in other words, if you try and do all of these things and you find that being able to add, remove, and so forth consistently with what I've described is difficult, maybe possibly abandon your initial data structures. But feel free to ask us questions. Of course, is there a nice way, given my choice, of making things better? Uh, if you do want to get fancy and try something big and, and use some real, one of the, you know, we go to Wikipedia on data structures um, and we see all these different data structures down here. You know, feel free to try and use any of these strange things down here that you might find useful, right? Like uh, whatever they may be. And if it's not built into Java, we're fully okay with you just copying and pasting a solution to that little data structure uh, on into your code. Of course, we do not want you to just copy and paste <laughs> the code for a graph class, that will not be allowed. But if you're using something as a, um, a piece of your implementation, that's OK. Uh, and I guess I should mention one little restriction here. Uh, look carefully at the top of graph and make sure you're not breaking these rules. Because you're building a package that we are going to be using, you can't be changing things like, I don't think that this method should be, uh, let's say, all these public methods, like don't make this private or whatever, uh, things like that. So anything that's public, you're not allowed to add new things. That's not cool. Uh, you should not be removing anything that is public or protected, because we may rely on it. Uh, there's multiple classes in here. So any of these classes that are public, you should not get rid of them. Um, and you can dig through. Uh, and you should not add new public classes. All right. So the idea is there is a set of these classes that are public that is world facing. You should not add more. Um, and if you want, read this code for more. Okay. Um, I guess I'll mention one little thing in this code now uh, about iteration, uh, the, the iteration class. So why do we care about this strange iteration class? Well, it's because that we want to be able to support the user's ability to iterate through, say, all the vertices in the graph using simple little notation like this. Okay. So in other words, we need to be able to return uh, something uh, that um, is an iterable, right? So ordinarily, this would be iterable. That would be in kosher and, and normal and like we've always seen. So why iteration? Okay. Uh, well, the reason is that if we actually look at our code, suppose I change this thing to say iterable. Well, then I need to return like a new, I don't know, bleep blorp. All right. And what is a bleep blorp? Well, I would have public bleep blorp uh, implements uh, iterable integer and so forth. 
Um, and what this mit would mean is that we would need to then uh, have a method called public iterator uh, that returns an uh, object of type iterator. So what about, I don't know, bleep blorp iterator? Then we'd have to go through and make yet another class that says, OK, here's a bleep blorp iterator. It implements iterator. Um, and then we'd have to do public next, has next, or you no, know, and boolean has next, all that stuff, right? So we basically have to create like this pointless class here, and then this is the one that actually does the work and so forth. But instead, what we've done is created a class iteration that does both. It both returns an object that can, uh, that it, sorry, it both returns an object that, that uh, is an iterator, and it is an iterator. How does it do that? It returns itself. Ugh. All right. So that's why it's glad, I'm glad that we've all done homework three at some point. It's not so bad. It's not that crazy of a trick, but just something to be aware of. Um, one other little thing is that the, uh, because we are an iterator, that means we need to support a next, has next, and remove method. If you look carefully at this code, you'll see that it has a remove method, but no next or has next method. What that implies is that you are going to need to make your own iteration classes. So you're going to need to extend this thing uh, to cover those. And the reason the compiler doesn't complain, of course, is that uh, this iteration here is an abstract class. So it doesn't actually have to have next and has next, but any derived classes need to actually cover uh, whatever iteration does. Okay, So that's probably the heaviest dose of object-oriented programming. Um, I know it'll seem a little confusing at first, I hope my explanation was a bit elucidating. Um, and here's an alternate presentation in text if you'd like. OK, so I think that's everything you need in order to write the basics of the graph package. And uh, more videos will be coming soon. So again, please don't be too intimidated by these last couple minutes. Um, I think it's something where after you've written uh, everything up through um, this part of the class, like before you get up to writing this right here, um, you won't need to think about it at all. It's only when you get to this you'll have to start doing it. Okay. Uh, so that is that, and I will see you in the next little video for this project.